This particular painting is about the impact of technology on relationships. But for that to make any sort of sense, we need to put it into some sort of context. If I tell you that I studied sculpture in college, that would help. Uh, we can see strong sculptural references in a lot of the figures I use in my paintings. If I mention the classical Greek and Roman sculptures that you would see in museums, those broken pieces, uh, that would also help. But another element in my work is the fact that in a former life I worked as an IT consultant, and that definitely impacts on uh, the technology references in my paintings. But those two elements are only a starting point because like in most areas in life, we strive to evolve and develop to the best of our ability. For me, that evolution has centered on the evolution of ideas, of processes, of techniques, and of perception. As an artist, I have the luxury of being able to fail. If a painting doesn't work out, it's just a painting that didn't work out. It's not the end of the world. However, a failure can be much more informative than a success. I can learn a lot more from a painting that has gone wrong by analysing what the issues are. However, analysing abstract ideas is one of the great pleasures and challenges of being an artist. One thing that makes the artist different is the difficulty in measuring the quality of the work. An athlete can measure themselves against the clock or points scored. A salesman can measure sales figures. But for the artists, it's much more tricky. After all, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Visual art is about perception. And perception is personal. Not just for the viewer, but for the artist too. One of the crucial things about working as a visual artist is that you're working in a vacuum. This idea of the artist toiling away in the garret is a romantic one, but there is an element of truth to it. For me, that separateness has been critical to my creativity. But it does require the ability to trust my own judgement. I've always tried to work outside the box, to push the envelope. By the way, this is an approach that I found invaluable when I was working as a computer programmer. Often the solution to a difficult problem could be found simply by looking at that problem from a different perspective. And this is something I think that makes the artist uh, an invaluable figure in society. I've always tried to produce work for myself, but not for the public. I believe that this is where innovation comes from. For the most part, I've worked outside the gallery system. I've worked independently, and for me, independence is freedom. Without that freedom, I believe I could not have produced the body of work that I have done over the last 30 years. But let's get back to processes and techniques and so on, and then we can have a proper look at some of the paintings. This piece is called Love Buzz. I referred to it earlier as a reference to the influence of technology on relationships. It incorporates a circular circuit board, which is pretty unusual, and it's got pen and ink drawings in the background. The canvas has been laid over those drawings in such a way as to allow the drawings to show through. It's using multiple layers of imagery. We have the drawings, we have the canvas on top of those, we have the circuit board on top of the canvas, and we have the figures on top of the circuit board. It makes for quite a complex piece, but all the elements tie together really nicely. This piece, which is titled The Edge, is about climate change. It's a joking reference to the edge of the world, where we can fall off. I wanted to move away from a strictly rectangular two-dimensional format so rather than stretching the canvas over the stretching frame in the usual way I allowed it to hang down to billow off the bottom of the frame. It's using a lot of texture on the canvas to create the effect of the water running off the edge. This piece is L'Amour. The background here is done in a Jackson Pollock style haphazard application of paint which is creating a contrast with the precision layout of the circuit board itself. The figures, the lovers in this piece, 
are done in a pointillist style, which again contrasts with the circuit board and the haphazard paint in the background. This is Blue Rupture. The idea behind this series of paintings was to give the impression that after the painting was hung on the wall, the red paint has ruptured, allowing blue paint to spill through those openings. The blue paint is running down the front of the canvas and actually dripping off the bottom of the frame. This is Isolate. After college, I moved back into painting and I started painting pieces of sculpture that I would like to make. One of the advantages of painting pieces of sculpture is that you can do things that you can't do when you're sculpting them. So we have a broken figure on top of a circuit board and that is laid on a backing board which has been given a very heavy texture and been overpainted to produce a haphazard effect. It's the juxtaposition of these different elements, I think, make this a successful painting. 